Welcome to Cascadeur. In this tutorial, I'll show you how to work with trajectories. As an example, let's use this Dracorex walk cycle. Let's say I want to see a trajectory of the tail's end. So I'm selecting the point at the tail's end and the frames. This immediately shows the trajectory of the selected point in the viewport. If I select a different point, I'll see its trajectory on the selected frames. Now, if I select multiple points, I'll see the trajectory of the top point in the hierarchy as default. This is a tab where you can choose the display mode of the trajectories. If I select all trajectories, I'll see them all at the same time. There is also an option to see the edges and the edges and trajectories at the same time. And here is the option to see the trajectory on the keyframes. By default, when I deselect the object, I'll stop seeing the trajectory. And when I select a new object, I'll start seeing its trajectory instead. Now, let's say I want to still see this trajectory while choosing new objects. To do this, I can fix this trajectory on my screen. Use this lock icon to keep the trajectory in the viewing port. Now, when I select different points, I still see the trajectory of the tail's end. If you right-click here, you'll see a menu through which you can add new points to the set of displayed trajectories or remove them. You can also do this by holding down Shift on your keyboard and right-clicking on the points. And I can hide all the trajectories by clicking Trajectory Turn Off. When this button is selected, none of the trajectories are visible. And when it's turned off, you'll be able to see all the trajectories according to the viewing mode selected. You won't be able to see the trajectories if the frames are not selected. There is no trajectory in just one frame. If I want to see trajectory on selected keyframes while also choosing additional frames, then I can lock the trajectory on this interval by using this button. Now I can click on other frames and I'll still be seeing the trajectory of the selected original interval. These locked intervals are highlighted with white corners. You can also edit your trajectories directly in the viewport. To edit them, press this button. This will change the trajectory color. You can move and change these points using manipulators. I wanted to emphasize that moving one object can affect other objects. When editing trajectories, it might be useful to use the tool called Scale. Select all the points on the trajectory, select Scale, and then increase or decrease the range of motion. And you can also set the pivoting points when editing the trajectory. Starting from Cascadia version 2025.2, you can also use tangents to edit your trajectory. I'm using this animation as my example. I'm selecting the point on the character's wrist, then selecting the frames on the timeline. However, I cannot see the trajectory. So why is that? After checking, I see that the trajectory mode is turned off. Now when it's enabled, I still see the trajectory for a different point. This tells me that it's a previously fixed trajectory point. I'm going to unlock it. Now I'm clicking on the lock button again, this time to fix the selected wrist point. You can also see on the time frame that we have a fixed interval where the trajectory is displayed, and it is not visible in the rest of the frames. To fix this, I'm selecting all the frames and setting them as an interval on which the trajectories are going to be displayed. And like this, I'm seeing all the trajectories that I need. Next, I go to Trajectory Edit Mode. Here, you can see small controllers around the key points of the trajectory. These are your tangent handles. For my convenience, I'm going to Isometric Mode and I'll snap the camera to one of the axes. I'm moving the tangent points using manipulators. 
you can edit curves this way only on the keyframes. When tangents have been changed on the keyframe, you will see this mark on the timeline. In this case, we've edited the tangents for the hand points, so you can see the mark in the hands track. If the tracks are not expanded, you will see the mark on the entire folder. If you would like to cancel your edits and get back to the original tangents, use this button. By default, tangent handles act together. If you disable this function, however, you can edit them separately and independently. And don't forget that you can look at the trajectories from different angles. Now, let me give you a couple more details. Let's say I wanted to use forward kinematics type of interpolation on this interval. We cannot edit tangents on the intervals with FK interpolation. That's why we only see one handle that controls the IK interval next to it. The moment I change from FK to inverse kinematics, I can again edit tangent handles for both intervals. Another important aspect is that different points work in different modes of editing tangents. An important detail is that some points move freely while others rotate around their parent. To edit the trajectories of these points, we need to switch the mode. Let's take a look at this example, where I'll be editing tangents for the directional point. I'm selecting my directional point now turning the trajectory edit mode on, you can see the directional points trajectory and there are no tangent handles around the keyframe on the trajectory. To enable them, I need to click this button to change it to directional. Now I see a different trajectory. This is a trajectory relative to the hand's main point. When you edit it, you will change the rotation of the palm relative to the parent's point. Here is another example for editing the trajectory of the character's head direction point. As you can tell, changing this trajectory will affect how the character's head is rotating. And of course, editing tangents works the same way for auto-pausing points. And that's all I have for you today. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel if you find this tutorial useful. And if you want to see more tutorials like this in the future, please let us know in the comments how often you work with trajectories and whether they help you with your animations. Don't hesitate to reach out to us if you have any questions. I'll leave the links to our social media in the description.